When you start with Python, it is easy to think it does not have types. You type a equals 10 and it just works. So is Python a type language? You bet. In fact, it is a dynamically, implicitly, nominally and strongly typed language. And to explain what that means, I will start with why types exist at all. Let's say it is 1960 and this is the memory of your computer. To store the values in your program, you have to point at a certain memory location and reserve some bits for the information. But how many bits? A boolean requires a single bit. A byte, 8 bits. An integer could require 16, 32 or 64 bits. The amount of bits is called the upper bound. So, who decides the upper bound? This is why types were invented. Historically, they specified how many bits were required for storing data types. This was especially important for reading data. If you assume your integer was stored in 32 bits, but it actually was stored in 16 bits, you read an additional 16 bits of data that contains other data. You can already imagine the problems this causes. The single most important task of a type system is to prevent retrieving corrupt data as these kinds of errors are really hard to debug. But the story does not end here. Once you have types, you can have more fun with them. For example, an integer type can also describe the operations that are allowed on it. An example would be that integers support multiply operations. Types can also specify lower and upper bounds of the values it contains. And there is another huge benefit of types. You can group them together in what is called a complex type. An example would be an employee class that has string name and float salary. Instead of sending individual names and salaries through the system, functions can accept data of type employee. Complex types can even hold other complex types, list of complex types and also functions. The complex type can be used as an interface and this is the key to allow modular design of your system. As long as developer A and developer B adhere to the interface, they can work independently on their parts. So, types are not to be underestimated when we design our systems. After hearing this, you understand that Python must have types. Here is an example when things go wrong. You probably have seen this error before. But the program had to be executed to spot the error and that tells you an important thing. Python checks types at runtime. This is known as dynamic type checking. When I started with Python, I thought that the fact that you can write a equals 10 without specifying its type is why it is called a dynamic language. But it is not. Dynamic type checking means that types are checked at runtime. Creating a variable without specifying its type is known as implicit typing. The type is inferred from value 10. A will be an integer. So, Python is implicitly and dynamically typed. But there is another property of its type system. Look at this error again. I am trying to add a string an integer. Python does not allow this. I have to explicitly cast the integer first to a string. Some say this makes Python a strongly typed language, but there is a lot of discussion about that definition. I'm going to use it anyway by the lack of a better one. So Python is implicitly, dynamically and strongly typed. Is there more? Yes there is. In this code, class B targets class A to inherit from. This is known as nominal typing. As you can see, there are many different type systems and a programming language can adopt a mix of them. And it does not stop here. Once you include external tools like static type checkers, you can mix nominal typing with structural typing. And to see how that works, click on this video right now. There you learn the difference between nominal and structural typing.